Madam Speaker, Notice from Acting Clerk. Honorable Members, Acting on behalf of the Clerk of the First Parliament, I rise to notify the House of the Unavoidable Absence of the Speaker of Parliament and his two deputy speakers. Accordingly, the Founder and Director of this Impact Movement has accordingly appointed Ms. Janet Elo and Resuket, who is currently the Speaker of the Pasak HCU House of Futurists outside the House and a youth MP of the House to act as Speaker for today's sitting, which is in accordance with the standing orders drafts from the House. Respectfully, the Speaker of the First Parliament shall assume his seat without further communication to the House at the next sitting of this youth Parliament. I humbly and respectfully notify the House. Thank you. Honourable Members, let's observe prayers. Almighty God, Father of the Upon this youth in that parliament, grant that it may perform its high duty as in thy sight. Give divine guidance to the founder of the movement and down members of parliament with discernment and vision, integrity and courage, that through the labors of this youth parliament, the interests and wishes of the members may be well and truly saved, and thy good purposes for the common human life be realized in our midst. Amen. O oh God, Grant us a mission for you, Parliament, fair as it might be, a fraternity of righteousness, where man shall rule his neighbor, a fraternity of plenty, where evil and poverty shall be done away with, a fraternity of brotherhood, where all success shall be founded on service, and honor shall be given to the deserving, a fraternity of peace, where the youth Parliament shall rest on the will of its members and the love for the common good. Bless the efforts of those who struggle to make this vision a living reality. Inspire and strengthen our people that they may give time, thought and sacrifice to speak the day of the coming beauty of the youth in that parliament. Ghana. Amen. Madam Speaker and the House, I'm glad to be here again. Madam Speaker, we are setting the place for the feminine gender as being the first acting female speaker of Youth Impact Parliament. On behalf of all my members, I convey the gratitude of the House to you. I'm looking at you in the speaker's room. Madam 
speaker with respect to the other paper, item 12, on the commencement of public business, uh, is not available. So uh, I'd like us to take that out. And then accordingly, uh, for item 13, the person to do that presentation in the case where he comes to take it. That is, but in the case where he is not in, we'll take item 14 before 13. But if item 14 has ended and he's still not around, we'll proceed to our general house. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker. In the absence of any further deliberation in the other paper, I solely move for it as a Thank you. Minority and Chinese. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. All right. To second the words of the majority. Thank you. Honourable members, the motion has been moved and seconded. I now put the question to the House. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Those not in favor say nay. Nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. Therefore, the other paper stands adopted. I move to item 6 on the other paper. Introdu official introduction of members. Okay, I'll start. I am Janet L. of Akeske, acting speaker for today's Okay, we 
Madam Speaker in the House, I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Madam Speaker, I have two statements, but um, I'll make the first statement for us to deliver, then later on I'll uh, read out the second statement in the House. Madam Speaker, um, at the last sitting that we held, the March of House on the 15th of June, in this venue, uh, I gave a statement on the demise of the Honorable Simon Helaman Saki, who is the former speaker of Hill House Exos Parliament. And we eulogized him and uh, we observed the mid science in his memory. Accordingly, Madam Speaker, the date for his burial is set, and from the family, his burial will take effect at. Um, on the 23rd of July this year in Accra. Is it Oyarifa? Yes, over there. And Madam Speaker, as a matter of fact, during the due deal at U House SRC, the House was fully represented with myself, the first deputy speaker, the majority leader, and majority chief. We went in the name of HTU Youth Impact Parliament and the student speakers for Osana to sympathize with the entire fraternity and we gave our tribute in honor of him. Accordingly, for the funeral, honorable members who wish to go can notify the office of the speaker so that, if possible, the speaker in conjunction with the speaker of few houses of the audience will save some slots in the bus for their transportation to be catered for. And apart from that, we, on behalf of the house again, we sympathize with the family on the loss of Honorable Samuel Kalam Thank you very much. Deputy Minority Leader, it was sad that we lost our former Deputy Speaker, the President of the Prime Minister, uh, Samuel Saki. But it is also important that, as we have indicated, we unionize with the U.S. SRC Authority in the name of the Impact Parliament, SRC and the Students in Case Corpus. And it is also important that those of us who are around and being a member, some of being a member of us in time past, it will be very important that you come up when you come out with the world so you can pay you the land. Thank you very much for the speaker. Any other speakers? Another two. When I speak in the house, I thank you very much for the and Joe is to the acting deputy minority leader. Madam Speaker, the latest news in the country uh, is the fact that uh, the leadership of the Republic has applied to IMF for bailout agreements. And this is as a sudden result of the economic situation in the country. Ghana, as it has been since independence, has been trying to improve the welfare of its citizens. However, due to unstable leadership, corruption, and greed, leadership has not been consistent with its agenda. And due to that, this will be the 17th time Ghana to be going to the IMF for a bailout. And I speak accordingly, in going to the IMF for assistance, it comes with terms and conditions. IMF will have to scrutinize the economy and state that this and this per day observation is the reason why the economy is not going on. Therefore, drop this, drop this, drop that. And that will equally affect the government's agenda. Is this the way we need to go? Is that a future for our use? But as speaker, the youth are not really happy because all we want is the country to be manageable. We cannot state that in our leader party, sometimes it's the person Sometimes it's the situation that we have. Sometimes it might be the constitution. Ghana has a lot of problems. And I think we, the youth, must start looking at how we will make the youth 
the three times for example. Well, if this is the 17 time series independence, we are going 30 years in the fourth republic, and we are going to add it again. Then what about in the next 20 years coming, where we will be at the peak of leadership of the republic? I'm sure by then, if we still continue the same attitude, we would have gone to Ireland for the 25th time, by 2035 or 40. But as speaker, is that the future we want for you? I think we have to look at this and whatever we can do. Sometimes, I will not support the fact that the entire situation is blamed on leadership. Sometimes it goes back to me. We, the citizens, we are not helping the government. We ought to increase productivity. Yes, leadership is a two-way affair. The followers will have to support you, and you support them. Sometimes the leader might be very good, but if the followers are not picking the agenda, things will not go on. Well. And we are sincerely, I wouldn't say we are not happy that we are going to end, but we want the best for our country. And if that is a decision, the leadership of this republic has reached. We just pray the first word. Because for whatever happens, this thing should not be used as a political bait for the next election. Because as a matter of fact, things are not going on well in the country. So if that is the decision leadership of the Republic has taken, we have to do it well for the betterment of the welfare of the citizen of this country. So speaker, that is uh, that speaker, that is all I have for this meeting. And I'm sure my honorable members will have some. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Alright, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm the person of the the acting minority leader of the city, as stated by the acting deputy minority leader. Based on the uh, precedence of what transpired in the last 30 years, on average, let's say, Every five years, Ghana has been to the island. What is there that our leaders are not doing? Statistics shows that what Ghana is the only African country that has come to the island more than any other African country. What is it that our leaders are not doing? Government will come and then say that what they are taking themselves out of what the international community. But as time goes on, you see that the same people go back. Successive government say the same thing, but they pass at our back and then also go. What is the actual thing that they are not doing? Well? I think that both government, both uh, the minor, the minority and then the majority of the Ghanaian parliament, being the NDC and then the NDC, they should come together and then what? See their way forward. Since that transpired in their administration, that what led them to the island. And then what? The current people of the day, what? A consensus was building. It shouldn't be based on only one party. Since they are in the power, all members that what? Be on the table to what? To discuss the way forward. It shouldn't be based on only one party. I think people also have independent bodies, knowledgeable people who are not what, affiliated to any political party. They are also have in that brain to what, uh, discuss what they are going for. I think I the only pray and hope that what, the current discussion going on, it should be favorable to the conditions that the IMF will be stating. It should be favorable for what, all the MSB, the workers, everybody. So that what, it will not what, affect us going forward. Thank you. Madam Speaker, on the matter, the statement that the majority have last year before the House, we know it's not any motion to deliberate on that. That's also to add my voice to it. I will differ a bit from a statement from Honorable to be saying that we should put blame on the leadership. But rather, we the followers, we also have the quota to say. I differ a bit because what is a leader supposed to do if the followers cannot even say a word for the leader to admit and also comprehend with his co workers? Who are you as a subordinate to supersede your leader? 
you follow instructions from your leader. A leader gives you a hearing ear to also contribute to the progressive of the country. Yet, per the things of the country and how things are going, going, you can hear most people complaining that the leader of the Republic of Ghana is not paying ear to his subordinates. To the extent that many people even complain that its members are not contributing well. Some parliamentary members should resign. What do we see? No comments, the leader don't do anything. So sometimes I will personally differ from my co uh, my majority, minority deputy leader. That it's not all the time that it comes from the followers, but rather the leadership at the top to also be a good hearing person. Thank you. Madam Speaker of the House, uh, I thank you very much for the opportunity. Madam Speaker, I'd like to uh, correct the fact that uh, the Deputy Majority Leader, Second Jones, made up. I didn't say that um, leadership cannot be given for you. I said it is not only leadership that I think it was. Citizens are also a complement of the cause. So I just want to clarify that fact that he has made it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and then Mr. Speaker, the subject matter on the floor. I want to add to what my colleagues have said. In time past, try to move the to what we are doing. Uh, as I've always said, and I'll say today, Ghana's problem is not here, it's for Russia. Yes, and many people disagree with me. That is a fact to be debated in another time. Because if you read about the Orange Revolution and what brought about the revolution in the Kings, it was born out of things happening earlier. We could have read about the Arabic, whereby an item that is supposed to be sold at 20 pesos by a virtue that and the one doing the price control could be sold at 70. So in a situation whereby we are fighting to control inflation, whereby there's no price controlling in the central bank, it becomes very worse. A perfect example. Three weeks ago, I bought some from what is it? The, the provision shop opposite uh, GSRP. At nice. The following week, exactly one week, I went to the market with boxes. Where from the additional duty? Based on what? If you think that the, 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 the people uh, before me, it doesn't still make sense. A, a typical example, typical example, when you go to the Jima today, the box of Jimani is being sold on the farm at 150 cents. When it's being conveyed from all the way from the Jima to Accra, you see those long bags, each box is being charged. 25 cents. So, collectively, both transportation and the cost of the tomato from the Chima to Accra is 175 cents. Now, speaker, could you imagine that market women sell that particular box at 800 cents in Accra when they go to the So, irrespective of all the measures government is going to put in place, it is not also still going to borrow out by that. Citizens are taking advantage. A perfect example, when published by, when the announcement was made that in two or 24 hours, by, a lot of them will happen. I'm sure probably those who live in the crowd, when you go to the bank, uh, the, the local gallery that is being sold at 18, I we were selling it at 32 cents. Because there's an opportunity for them to. To, to make money. So, I'm of the view that until government takes the initiative and the fight upon itself to streamline price controlling in our market, we are not going to get anything. And again, I blame our problem 40% leadership and 60% followers. Because the up and down, if citizens, we, others, should be on the move. I think that will be on the move. 
Because anywhere in the world, for example, in Germany, in 2016, fuel price was just increased by just a few margin. Smart citizens left all the variables on the road and went over. In two hours, they would have to just sit down and, and reverse the fuel back, the price back to where it was before. Now, the issue with I am. Yes, this is where we are. And nobody can run from that. The economy is in distress, both by doing of the, 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 the government and we, the people that is in the forest. So, the picture that is always painted that all the problem up to the blame of the leaders, while we, the followers, are not doing the part that we are supposed to do, is what continues to bring the problem every now and then. Because leadership, by virtue of whatever stress they may go through, may try to find solutions to the problems that we have. But if we, the citizens, look at the, 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 the flag issues that are happening in the current area, nobody can bring that particular issue in leadership. Nobody can blame that particular issue in leadership. When we talk about the bypass, those can be pushed back. I'm sure probably those who don't have pushed the likes and those, you offense. Because when you look into the others, in fact, Greater Carolina Winter State's operation clean your front page. That particular operation is going on. Houses within one hundred are being demolished. We, the citizens, are the same people singing and calling for the head of the regional minister because he's doing that. So, on the way. So, time in the I will say with every time we get that our problem is not Russia. It's not leadership. Until we, the, 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 the citizens, begin to do, because, right, let, 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 let's put it. SRC may not be taken serious by management because in time past, some activities of the SRC have not supported too well, so you will not be taken serious or immediately. But until the SRC begins to put itself on, on, on the stage whereby we, we do things like right, management is going to give us the same relevance. I don't know probably if anybody gets the argument. Because anywhere here, today, Aside DC, right? Sure, the big boys at the top. Who knows the thousand presidents? I'm not sure. Probably that one is being known by neither of us. When they meet here, they get rubbish like they because they feel that that thousand is the grounds for this our normal money stealing and the likes. But if the thousand have been a very objective organization, have as it is an objective have been since its establishment. I'm sure when you mention it, that I'm giving the SRC welfare committee, but I'm a last member, you will give it relevance. So if the SRC, even the SRC, the SRC cannot give it relevance by virtue of activities in the time class. So the IMF bail out whatever is happening to the economy currently is weak. Because once inflation is high, okay, anything, anything becomes. It, it doesn't make sense to anybody. Because I can't buy shit now at 90 minutes, and the following week I can't buy it at 12 cities. So I wanted to, to do something, I wanted to, to, to compare prices. So I went to the chat. That same day I got the shenmue. And it was being sold at the chat at 97, 7 pesos. At the chat. Meanwhile, she's selling it at 12 cities. So even if Money is being taken from anywhere and injected into the economy for the economy to be stable. We have this roadside uh, uh, market women who are, by virtue that they want to make our treasures for us, are overpricing their 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 their, 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 their goods that they have in the shop. When you go to market today, depending on your person and how the items are sold from you, are, you can't buy any banana by the roadside. And me, because my dad is a driver, we used to go to the bush to bring food stuff where we market with them. And surprisingly, we would get there and you see a bunch of that thing probably will be sold in the bush at five When we get to the town and then they mention the fact you think. <laughs> and not because probably by virtue of that petrol price has increased and transportation has increased. 
the margin between what has been increased is so insignificant that it will cause a rise in the price of the goods that you are selling to the final consumer. So always is the final consumer that suffers, and it is we, the final consumers, that are suffering, and we are the ones making the complaint. So may I say, until central government sits down and do price controlling, we will not get anywhere. It will make sense to live on. Thank you, Mr. Let me also make reference to what our uh, honorable uh, the minority the minority has said based on the price control. Okay. In Togo, let me guess because I'm always closer to this. Let me guess make some scenario there. So let's start at Togo. Okay. In Togo, there is no way that you see that there is a price increase. Like that, let's say five cities, the price, the base is five cities. So you will not see that from five cities, you increase the price from five cities to what? Five cities, even five cities, ten percent. Even if you ask something that it will be insignificant, that the effect you will not, you will not really see the effect of what? The price increase. Because there are structures. I always say, when you go to Togo, when you see their soldiers, like when they ask you to do this, who dares you that you should disobey them? Right? Because they are very strict on what they are citizens. They are always what? Uh, closer to them what they are supposed to do. Not that we are here and then, let's say, the people that are what, uh, responsible to guide the people in the market. Let's say control the people in the market. They are not where to be found. Someone can just sit in this corner and what? Establish his own pride. And then the, that person is the only person there. Monopoly is power. Whether you buy or not, you surely buy. You surely buy. And then price increases in what? Let's take uh, this for example. How many uh, countries are part of what? The international market. Apart from all the countries, how many people have you seen that what, they are going back to what, the international military fund and they are blaming all their what, problems on what, the coronavirus and then what, what is happening in Russia and in Ukraine? How many countries have you ever heard that what, their economy is in distress or they are suffering because of what, coronavirus and then uh, Russia is doing war? You never hear anything. Only in Ghana, what are they Ghana doing? What is our leaders not doing? What are they not doing that always they have to blame their problems on what? Something. You will blame your problem on what? Let's say uh, Mahama will blame his problem on what? The uh, subsequent of power shortage. My, 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 blame their problems on what? Coronavirus and then what? Russia and Ukraine war. Are we the only country that which is suffering from this uh, virus and then the war? You will never get people complaining. If you're looking at what the yeah, inflation rate is very, very significant. You will never get it's always what has always been in the single digits. But looking at our our inflation rate now, by maybe by 2030, uh, it will be in the hundreds. What are we not doing well or doing wrong? So we, most of the things are, our leaders, most of our leaders are not being to do to us. Always are, they are blaming what, they are problems or what, something that what, that pops up. Because what, the problem is, uh, the problem is there not to be. Coronavirus came in 2019, somewhere the beginning of 2019. But going to the, the International Monetary Fund, so it's not uh, to be. It has been there since. But something that that less what comes in within this short time, we are blaming all our problems about the war and then the virus. I think our our leaders have to be more truthful to us. Thank you very much.
Madam Speaker and the House, I thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm just sure. Madam Speaker, just to have my voice to cut the acting minority that said. Madam Speaker, I think it's high time the leadership of the Republic and any other leadership of sorts learn to take responsibility for their actions. It is so sad that anything that happens, they are in a rush to blame it on their predecessors. Even six years after leadership of being in power, they are always blaming on their predecessors. It, it doesn't, no, like, I just, I just, I'm not able to grab it because you are now here to solve the problem that the predecessor has left. You are there as a solution. So when you are unable to solve the solution, admit and then allow people with their head to join you. But you are in a rush to always blame. And I'll speak up, blending is something I don't like. Because it is an action or it is a sign. Let me even say it is a sign. He who is ready to do something takes responsibility for all his actions. I'm not saying leadership is bad. But what I'm trying to say is that they have played precedence of blending. They have played precedence on blending. And I think the current economic crisis, they have been elected to solve the problem. They should be able to sit down, analyze, and resolve the problem. The problem they have to keep on coming, yes. But I believe there is problem everywhere. There is problem in the UK. There is problem in Uganda. There is problem in Russia. There is problem everywhere. But it's all about how we manage it. Yes, I agree. Followership are part. But if leadership are not able to do a little percentage, that they are in charge of Then how can the country work? They are the controllers. They are the ones who set the ceiling and face. They take charge of law and order. When you do your job, the citizens will comply and then they do as expected. So we must all learn to perform our duties and do it very well and stop this building. Ghana is for all of us. If Ghana goes down, I cannot be there and be blaming you guys because I'm also in the mess. So we should all learn to take responsibility and do our best to make country, you know, to make the country better for us. We are not going anywhere, we will still be in Ghana. If leadership of the Republic supports Ghana, we are still inside. So where are we going? So I don't see where the blame game is going to. Then the problem is there. Let's focus on solving the problem. That is why leadership is there as a problem solver. Thank you very much. Thank you very much once again. I'm Joe Samuel, the Director of Youth Impact Development. But I'm speaking accordingly, it's important that we update the House on the composition of the second parliament. But I'm speaking accordingly, at our seventh city, we made it clear that we are going to open nominations. And nominations were going to be open from 1st June to 20th June. And at the end of that, we had 40 applications. Madam Speaker, from 20th June to 30th or the end of that month, the applications, all the applicants, uh, the constituencies that have more than one applicants were vetted and accordingly designated, and the best applicant was retained. So at the end of the day, we still have. 40 constituencies designated to applicants, which means all the funds that are applied have been put there. And I'll speak accordingly, on the 1st of July, the application was opened again for the second batch. And I'll speak out, 
After two, three questions to open, then tomorrow the application will end. As of now, we have only had around eight to ten applications. Our speaker, we are not in any competition. That is why when anyone applies, we surely designate you. We are not in any competition and we are looking to build capacity for members. So why should we be in a rush to lay off people? Because there are too much people in all this. And by tomorrow, we don't know whether all the 53 seats remaining would have been applied for. However, this is what we propose to do in conjunction with the appointment committee. When it is 10 July, applications will be closed. However, the portal will still be open. Until all the 53 have been applied for, it will be open. But by 10 July, the ones that have been applied for will be removed out of the uh, available seats until all of them are filled up. So it could even be that the second parliament might be in session, but by then we we'll have only 86 seats. So the other uh, 13 that will be left will still be open until they are offering. And members, you know, sometimes people are tied, maybe someone will want to come to that maybe the form is quite serious to you. Yes, these are relevant information you need. Because in that form, we have uh, you need to indicate the constituency you want, an alternative constituency, the committee you want standing, and then select committee. Maybe the leadership position you are interested in. It makes decision making easier for the directorship of the movement and also for the appointment committee to easily recommend on that. Madam, Madam Speaker, the chairman of the appointment committee is accompanied in the house, and when he wants to speak, I will call on him to come a little bit close to the majority leader and speak on, on the ending of this. Madam Speaker, accordingly, I have here the Google form uh, Excel document of the first set of applications, all 40, and then the early designations are here. So for Volta region, we have been able to designate uh, 17 applicants in the solidarity with North Tongue. For OT, we have been able to designate 6 seats in the solidarity with Two, Krachi, Nishumu, and then West. For Eastern Region, we only designated two applicants. So, out of the 33, it's left with 31 seats. And then for Greater Accra, we have around, uh, let's say, around 10 15 seats out of the 34. So, all of them are open. And then, whoever is interested can go to our Facebook page. The form is there. You apply. And then you will be redesignated until all the 95 constituencies are filled. The portal will remain open. But Ira will be updating it and removing the, the ones that have been applied for and then in June month. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I'm moving to the update. Okay, we move to the 11th item Innovation of Second Parliament. Um, Honourable please, please do understand. Madam Speaker, again, I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, Madam Speaker, the second parliament, the inauguration of the second parliament uh, upon the decision of the Board of Directors of the Impact Movement in conjunction with the leadership of the Impact Parliament. The date stated and appointed for the inauguration is 13th of August, Saturday, 20. In this auditorium. Madam Speaker, we are hoping to have in the House the Honorable Peter Machuko, the Honorable Benjamin Kudo, if in case he's not able to come, we'll call the Honorable Justice of North Nyan, and then Honorable uh, Etonon Flulu, if in case he's not able to come, we'll call the Honorable Divine Person of Old Municipal Association. This time we are hoping to have only three. Uh, guest of honor because he wants more time for them to see. Learning from the organization of the first anniversary special sitting that we have five, we are a little bit short of time. So, as much as possible, we want to make it only three. And we actually have in mind to invite a regional minister. Yes, as a matter of fact. But, however, we have postponed uh, him coming to this house to the second anniversary uh, of youth impact movement, which will be done to the second. Of, um, of April 2023. So you will be the special guest for um, 
for that program, hopefully. And then we also had in mind to invite the former speaker of Ghana's Sixth Republican Parliament, the right honorable Edward Doha. However, they have decided to postpone this invitation as well to the inauguration of the third parliament, which will also be in August 2023, hopefully. So, for those particular ones, we want to reduce the number of guests that we have so that we can have more time to hear them out. If possible, we are even looking at when these big men are there, we should be able to have some 30 minutes debates for them to see the potential of the youth. So, in order for that to happen, we need to reduce the number of people to speak so that we can have at least 30 minutes for debate. So, we are still looking to the other, the other paper for the cities, two cities will happen on the 13th of August 2022. Now, in the last city, which is which will be the 10th in number, uh, it will be the 7th uh, sitting of the second session of the first parliament. It will take place from 9 a.m. that Saturday, and the house will be dissolved, or the house will adjourn soon. That then at 12 o'clock, the inauguration of the second parliament will begin. The other paper is already drafted, and we are still reviewing it on time. Honorable uh, Speaker, accordingly, I want to one officially. Uh, officially uh, notify the House that the leadership of the movement, the foundation, and then the parliament, with the fighting our delegation, we are still reviewing. We will pay an exit call from the water regional minister, Dr. Ashibawaya Ocha. We are hoping to pay that exit call to introduce the movement and its movement the foundation and parliament to him. And also, if possible, services for your support. But all we want so he to know that we have this vibrant youth group in the water region. It's so a plus to him as regional minister to know that the most vibrant youth parliament in the entire republic is in this region. So we want to go and pay that taxi call to him and introduce the entire movement to him. Accordingly, I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the Right Honourable Speaker and my guest house. My name is Felix Bakwe Adiche, and I am the first Deputy Speaker of this Honourable House. Uh, I am very sorry, I came in very late, and upon the entering, I heard I was speaking on most of the updates that we have from the the formation of our next house, which has to do with uh, members applying, then being assigned to the, uh, the various constituencies and the likes. So, just as you said, yes, work has been done. I think there's an update on the page that shows the people who apply for certain constituencies and then the various constituencies that they've been designated to. So, it has been a collaborative effort from the side of the leadership of the house, the board of the movement, and then the people who applied. Uh, as you rightly said, people complained about the uh, tedious nature of the application process, but yes, we are trying to put in place a very uh, strong system such that we can be able to uh, feed on those informations when uh, we need them. So, uh, not to bother house, I want to just commend my boss for doing the uh, chunk of the work for me and if any uh, questions or uh, submissions should arise from this topic, I will uh, readily answer them. Thank you very much. Yes. Do you have any questions concerning the update?
Okay, I guess we move to the 13th item. Okay, we move to the next item. Presentation by Mr. Aman Rahman, Deputy Director of the Impact Movement in charge of parliamentary affairs on best parliamentary behavior. I think we should give him a yay. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and then the guest house for the opportunity to speak on the subject matter that has been laid before the House. Madam Speaker, and then the guest house, it's very important, and then we must learn some few stuff as far as our parliamentary business is concerned, being it best parliamentary debates, behaviors, the general conduct of MPs in Parliament, and then how the entire parliamentary debate system works. And it is very important that we, we note them. As I've been Speaker of the eight U.S. House of Parliament, I've been saying always that we must take very key interest in what we do here, because some of us may not be ending what we are doing here, we may take it far. Probably, who knows? Maybe by 2032, some of us here may be elected as MPs of our various constituencies where we come from. Yeah. Probably, we will be having Honorable uh, uh, Abahadi as MP for K2 South. Yeah. Maybe we may be having Honorable Jones as MP for uh, whole central constituency. Yeah. And probably myself as MP for Ningu Pam Pam on yeah. sitting on our St. George. Yeah. So it is very important that we, we, we take whatever we are doing here very seriously. And it is important that we know a few things. As debate and general parliamentary business, it is all brought down on debate approving motions in and out. And then it is must be noted that in every parliamentary system, we have two sides, being the, the majority and the minority side. Mostly, mostly, the majority side have to do with the government in power, and then the minority side have to do with the, the opposition party. Anywhere in the world, that is how it has been. It is only to the extreme cases where we have a hung parliament, as we have in Ghana currently, whereby both sides of the house are on equal number. So it makes the parliamentary business very interesting. So since the eighth parliament of the Republic of Ghana, we have seen how interesting parliament has been since the, 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 the eve, that night, when the eighth parliament ought to start. Having equal number in the house make it very interesting. Now, to continue, it must be noted that when a motion is being laid on the floor of parliament for debate, it is dependent on the majority side of the house to make sure they defend the motion. And then the minority side of the house always play what we call the devil's game. The our work is to make sure that whatever motion is being tabled in the House for debate is being rubbished, loopholes ought to be found, make the motion look so irrelevant for its approval. And basically, that is what the minority always ought to do, and that is their side of, of, of the game. But to the extreme, it is not always the situation. It is to the extreme where we have very controversial issues that is under debate. That is where we see the minority playing the devil's game. For example, the issues on E-Levy. Example, on the, on the approval of the, the, the Speaker of Parliament. Example, when the CI 125 was laid in Parliament in 2020 for the election 2020, we saw how the minority played the devil's game frustrating the entire process. 
But to every parliamentary business, there's a saying that the minority will always have their say, but the majority will have their way. And it is very important that we know how our behavior in parliament, debate-wise, everything ought to be done. So to proceed, we'll be taking the debate side first. Now, to the debate side, it must, you must always note that in your debate, when you are debating, sometimes when I was speaker of eight years of the parliament, most honorable members don't debate. They lament and complain. They don't debate. The motion that is on the floor, for example, we are discussing income and expenditure accounts as far as the SRC, first semester, financial year, financial semester is concerned. What I've observed as speaker is that all honorable members lament. For example, an item or a money has been allocated for the purchase of probably this particular tripod stand. Honorable members, instead of making the argument of the, the, the amount, whether we got value for money, rather we will be making this to feel that is it relevant to buy the tripod stand? So you will see, see here honorable members making submissions such as, so you used all this money for this. Meanwhile, we have to pay fees for students with that particular money. In that particular regard, that item that is under debate, you are not contributing to it. So you realize that in time memorial, when you start with that particular debate, me, I will stop you because you are not contributing to the subject matter on the floor. And then it must again be noted that in your debate, you take out away emotions and sentiments and all those things out and put the issues as it's supposed to be. So you will realize that in our, in our SRC parliament, in our SRC parliament setting, mostly the issues that we debate are not external related issues, but mostly internal related issues. We don't have a motion, probably a motion kind of, let's say for example, the advent of social media is a case on academic excellence. You speak for or against the motion. But mostly, our, the debate that comes on the floor here always got to do with uh, income and expenditure accounts, audit reports, uh, WOCOMS reports, what was the name? Uh, 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 Junut report and the likes. When we translate it into the national parliamentary space, it's basically the same thing. So, for example, in a situation whereby MPs make a call to speaker that the road minister ought to be drawn to to parliament to come and answer questions why the road from Sokoto to Ho has not been completed on schedule, and then speaker honor that particular call to bring Rose Minister to the House. It is dependent on members of Parliament to put it to the Minister why that road has not been completed on schedule. So you will realize that they will be putting questions to the Minister why this amount of money has been allocated, why the project has been delayed per its scheduled completing time. If we should bring it to the U.S. House of Parliament, we will realize that People are now come to attack the person answering the question. You are coming to attack the person personally rather than the work the person is ought to do. So you realize that in the national space politics, in the national parliament, you realize that they debate all right and they laugh at the end of the day. But in our situation, you realize that after the debate, we will fight. So you will see that after you will you will close and you will see. Because instead of you speaking to the issues, why probably have organized an activity of which you need explanation, why probably the week celebration, at the end of the week celebration, a gospel rock show or a Thanksgiving service ought to be uh, 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 organized, kind of. So in the quest of establishing why that did not happen, 
putting the question to the entertainment committee chairperson to answer question, probably he has a reasonable answer to that particular question that you are putting. But you realize that instead of you putting that particular question, the question is going to be, oh, because you, 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 you chop all the money surrounding the week celebration, that is why we were not able. Instead of putting the question that, Mr. Committee Chairperson, per the schedule and then the activity line up for the week celebration, we ought to get a gospel rock show or a Thanksgiving service at the end of the, the uh, week celebration. So I'm putting it to you to give us explanation why that particular activity on the program outline didn't happen. So in that particular quest, you realize that the person will have no other option than to answer the question. Then based on his question, you do what you, you will write down your, 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 your questions from his response and get a follow-up. But in a situation whereby you go straight to attack the personality rather than the work the person has done, we will do what we call the hide and seek. So I will run away from the question that I am supposed to ask or to answer. So we will just base the argument on, you, you've insulted me, eh? So, instead of, so accountability is always not achieved at our level. So in a situation whereby every now and then, are dragging Kenya for reactor every now and then to come and account for the COVID expenditure. You realize that in their quest in dragging Kenya for reactor to parliament, every now and then has been very objective. Because they are putting the question to cooperator that we've had this amount of money from these people, we've had this amount of money from these people, and we don't know what that money has been used for. So we want you to tell us what those monies have been used for. So just realize that in a situation whereby they are of the view that Ken Ferrata has used that money to buy a private jet for himself. Ken Ferrata has used the money for this and that. Ken Ferrata, together with the Achim people, are we will run away from that particular. So we will just base the argument on the, on the basis that you have insulted me. So that particular invitation that you are an outcome. So it is very important that at our level we understand. Again, we look at our emotions and sentiment in tabling and debating. That is why when motions are tabled and we are discussing, if you could observe, you will not begin your, 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 your debate with emotions. You, you, you won't proceed. Because in a situation whereby a problem has been laid down for us to debate, and then you go complaining about a problem, you are not providing solution. So that is why every now and then, I always have problem with every opposition party in government. Be it the MPP or the NDC or the CPP or the, the Democrat or the Republican. We always lament. We always complain without providing a solution. For example, if to the issues, a, a perfect example was Doomso issue after that material time. Demonstrations upon demonstration, carry generator, lantern, candle, all over the country demonstrating. But there had not been any single instance where the then opposition had proposed to government that when we do A, B, C, D, Y, Z, we will get power back on the line. There have not been any instance. And then in our, in our, in our student space politics, because we don't have two sides, it's always one-sided. The observers come as and when they want to come. Some come for the basis of allowance, and some come by virtue that end of semester allowance, they will be denied, so they have to come. So it's always one-sided. So it is very important that in our quest in lamenting, we provide a solution in our debate. And it's very important that we look at all those steps. In time memorial, I've been trying to put it to honorable members how to debate and read. Sometimes honorable members do reading and sing when they are debating. So, if you could observe in time past, when I'm debating and making my case, I will not leave low poles for you to get a follow-up. In your debate, sometimes when minority leader is, is debating, he always asks rhetorical questions that will tempt me to give an answer. I get it. 
When you are debating, for example, you, you, you put, when the question is, the other time we were debating about, what's the name, uh, the, the topic on, isn't Ghana, the last debate we had, isn't Ghana, when Honorable Likin was here, Ghana's economy, something like that, I forgot the topic. You let's put it to the, the monetization of yeah. uh, uh, Ghana politics yeah. Yeah. by citizens or by politicians when we're, when we're having that particular, particular debate. It is important, I don't know those of you who were here, but I'm sure all of you were here, right? You will realize that minority leader always will call for me. And once you call for me, I will come in. In a situation whereby your, your submissions are in line that you want to ask me a question based on what I said. So once you ask me a question on what I said, I will come in. By every means possible. If I want to be quiet, I'll just write down what you, you've, you've said and when it is. And it is very important that when we are debating, we must tolerate each other's view. As Honorable Adeta has been saying, opinions are like noses and everybody has one. So for the very fact that I say something that you disagree with, it does not mean that you have to escalate. No, it is not done that way. That is why to be able to have a very, uh, how do I put it, streamlined debate, we respect each other's view. So when it is your time that you are speaking, irrespective of anything that you are saying that I disagree with, I must not interject you do when you are talking. Once I begin interjecting what you are saying, tempest rise and we will exchange blues. And we have been saying it in the radio stations all over the place. In, in and out. Because we are refusing to tolerate each other's view. It is democracy, basically. And once it's democracy, I'm entitled to what I'm saying. Probably you may not agree with me. For example, I just made a statement that Ghana's problem is on the basis of followership. Yes, I'm sure 100% sitting here, 70% 70, 70 of people have disagreed with me on what I've said. But it's up to you to come up with a debate why Ghana's problem is leadership rather than followership. And that's how all what the debate is about. And in order for you to be a, a good debater, as I've rightly said, one, Tolerating each other's view is very important. Two, you make sure that your debate is devoid of sentiment, emotions, and personal attacks on a particular person. Because what I've realized at the SRC level is that we attack the person answering the question more than the subject matter. So you realize that throughout all SRC parliament age, all the fights that has occurred in Parliament before had a, was born out of people attacking the personality of the one speaking rather than the subject matter we are discussing. From the last sitting we, we, we had, all the fights that were, were that emanated from, from the city were not born out by because Honorable uh, Agba uh, this in about how the Hubert is not been providing answer to a particular question that he has been asked. All the fights had basically emanated because instead of speaking to the subject matters on the floor, we have decided to insult a particular person, which once you insult me, it will not go down well with me. If my tolerance level is that very low, you will not go scorched me. And where my, my, my fingers inch me, I'll try to exchange the fingers, the mouth, with the blue. And by all means, it will, it will, it will result in, in a fight. That is why if you could observe critically, when the issue of E-Levy was being debated, and then first of the speaker ought to vacate the chair and go and vote and come back. What caused the fight was not born of that particular practice. It was born up by all means somebody has said something to the opposition side that has caused the fight. Because if the issue was, because we have had issues in time past that was more even heated than what we have. Look at what had happened on the 7th of January 2021 that resulted in the, in the fight. Look at Honorable Eslausu and Honorable Tankanda. Because Honorable Mita Kando is sitting on the chair, supposedly chair of 
Honorable Esla Osu. So Honorable Esla Osu ought to go and sit on Honorable Mita and Kando and they fight all over. Those issues that happened in Parliament that day was not born out of issues, the real issues. It was born out of personal issues. So you realize that Honorable uh, uh, Tema East MP, or what is the name? Someone should remind me. Carlos. Carlos Ahimsa. Honorable Carlos Ahimsa wanted to be the same boot. And then you realize that the anger that Honorable Budaka invested on Honorable Carlos is not born out that he was running away with the ballot papers. If you could observe critically, it was personal because all the, 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 the activities and, the, and then how they were behaving in, the, in Parliament right from the start, instigating the parliamentary service, whole Parliament against uh, Asin North MP, that he is holding the double uh, citizenship, that he is supposed not to be present in Parliament, all those issues. Were. So you realize that the anger that Honorable Mutaka invented on Honorable Carlos was not born because he was carrying, he was running away with in this Parliament. They are all MPs. So probably they can trash that issue out anyhow. But it was born out of personal issues because you, you have angered me. So in our local dialects, we say, uh, uh, let, let, we, we have a saying that you, you use the bar thing to, 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 to beat your junior brother when he insults you and then your parent don't want you to beat him. So when they ask me to bath you, I will scratch the sponge against your body very well. So, me bathing for you, I'm punishing you in that particular regard. So, if we should put it in that particular context, that was what happened. So, I continue to say, for us to be able to have a very good debate system, we must always make sure that we take personal emotions, sentiment, and out. Sometimes you realize that people, especially in Volta region, even though I don't understand ever, but sometimes you realize that in the studio, because probably somebody has said something about somebody, probably I've insulted Mahama. Probably in my statement, I've insulted, I'm, I'm making a submission and I'm going, all of it, probably I've insulted Mahama. You have taken the issue so personal to the extent that you have to exchange blows or probably insult each other. So you realize that in our political landscape, the politics of insult has become on the rise. And then we are, we the youth, that we are saying we are the future leaders, are also taking it up. And it's very dangerous. Right now, if you are a party communicator, and then you don't insult, you will not be sent to the radio stations anymore. <laughs> yes, you won't do party communication. You, you won't do it. Because yes, you want the person who can insult very well. And then we are gradually drifting away from the culture that we have as Africans. Respecting the elders, irrespective of what the elder has done, eh? we have the mass in such a way that you told you have your tone to speak into that particular issue. But now it is no more the same. Somebody can sit somewhere and insult Mama Akwaru free for, of charge. And then by the invention of social media, we are hiding behind the facelessness of social media and insulting leaders. Yes. Just look at the few issues we had at SRC relating to our elections just in time past. Just, just look at what had happened. People that on a normal day, today, hmm, I may insult Mahama today. But if this is Mahama face to face, I can't say hi. <laughs> yes, I can't even say hi. I can't even wave at Mahama. But by virtue that Probably I can sit far away by the by the facelessness of Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or WhatsApp. I will insult Mahama. But on a normal day, I can't meet Mahama and say hi. The protocols that have to jump before I meet Mahama it will take me like five years. <laughs> on a normal day, as we are currently. So it is very important that inviting the policies of insult in, in our in our democratic and parliamentary system is very we, we, it is very important that we must be drifting away if we are the future leaders. Because me, I say we are not the future leaders. Anybody will disagree with me. Yes, you have your own reasons to disagree. I don't have an issue. 
But we are not the future leaders. So I always say that if possible, they should be important future leaders for us. Yes, probably from China or uh, Singapore or wherever for us. Because if we are the future leaders, whereby we have picked up the attitude of those who have already done with whatever they will be doing, the likes of those who we are following to be insulting and learning what we are learning today. They are done. Now. Probably Mahama has been president before. If he is not president anymore, he is fine till he dies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Akufo has been president, he has seen uh, everything in this life before. Yeah. Mazi Hamedou has seen everything in this life before. The likes of John Buedu, the likes of Samin Jemfi, the likes. They have seen everything before. Probably the amount of money you have currently can sustain them to the die if they know good. But you and I, mm, currently, our only hope is national service. Probably we are done with national service. As I am currently. Honorable mm. Felix, Adich, and I, we are in the house. Mm. Yes, we know what is happening to us. We are not even coming through the lineage whereby probably we can say that Mahama or Nanado is a long sleeve. Very long slip family member of ours mm -hmm. that by the mention of his name in a particular office will be granted job. No, here lies a situation that where we come from, nobody even knows their family name. Now, I come to speak about we, the human beings, ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, it is very important that we drift away from the politics of insult in our debate system, and it has rapidly become a norm within our parliamentary space at the highest housing level. And it is very sad. Somebody will write, what sense does it make to allocate monies for finance committee's operations? Instead of you to put the question that, what work have they done? What, are, what accounted to that particular allocation that has been given to them? In the first place, you have already inserted the person answering the question. <laughs> So, if it is to me, to run away from that, probably if I have done something wrong, to run away from that particular question that you asked, I'll make a scene. I'll just pick a scene. And I'll run away. And that is what has been, has been, has been causing for all this, uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, 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 Broha in Parliament and the accountability system that we have. So, if I want to run away from accountability, I'll be expecting you to insult me. Yes, and it will by all means happen. And once it happens, I'll just clean a scene out of it. So the three RDC was called, was given the speech. He knows what will follow. He knows exactly what is in mind. He was just praying for somebody to do the chair and a set there. <laughs> and he boycotted the whole program and went home. <laughs> so on a normal day, who said Tria? Supposed not to be. Even, uh, how do I put it? Even uh, uh, resulting in you running away. But by virtue that you, have, you know that what is coming is, is going to be hell, I will create the scene out of that particular instance and then run away. Mm -hmm. So accountability is always not accounted for. And it, as I said, yes, they say we are the future leaders. But I'm saying we are not the future leaders if we continue on this particular target. Yes. Anybody would disagree with me. You have your own reasons. I have my own. We are not the future leaders. We are not. I always say that if we are the future leaders, then we must begin doing certain things right. We must begin doing certain things right as youth. And that is why it is important that Youth Impact Parliament is providing all of us with the opportunity to learn and groom ourselves for the future. Who knows? As I said in my opening uh, 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 speech, the honorable member there may be appointed minister of Kostaba. So depending on what you've learned from your youthful age, that is what we are going to zoom in with and it's going to become part of you, whether you like it or yes. Whether you like it or yes. You may try to change by virtue of being a bit diplomatic, but when the pregnant woman is pregnant, he or she can't hide a pregnancy with no matter dress he or she wears. One day, anyhow, it will be exposed. And that's why you will realize that some elders does something and say, hey, 
So you do that. That is how the person is. It's not that the person, that is how, by virtue of the position and diplomacy, the person wants to hide some of his or her characters. So you'll be surprised that, hey, Oral Mutaka has, has slapped somebody. <laughs> Oral Thomas Ingram has, is running away with ballot paper. You thought probably it is, was just that night that he has raised hairs or. No, that is his lifestyle. <laughs> so if the people that we are looking up to, that they are making the, the argument that we are the future leaders, those are the people that we are learning from. We are not the future leaders. And even with our S housing space, that we have been given to manage that probably eight years I'll see total budgeted income. Eight hundred thousand and six. We are not able to manage it properly. Then now you have been handed over Bank of Ghana and every resources in this country to manage. And you are telling me that we are a future leader. No, we are not. So until we do the small things right. We would not. We would not. That's what I mean. I'm saying if there's a way that we can import future leaders from China and Singapore, probably Cuba, like the way we import doctors from Cuba, we should be looking at we import president from China, bring minister of health from Germany, <laughs> and the likes to come and take over the affairs of the country, because it is not going to be easy. Just put, just put your eyes down. Yes, we are the people that are stealing the money all at the house level. When we send one contract, our percentage ought to be 50 in that particular contract. Mm -hmm. SLC, just SLC, Lava Bench contract. That is your percentage. Now, you are awarding the contract that is going to construct road from Accra all the way to Burkina Faso. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So, just imagine. So, it is very important that as Youth Impact Parliament has provided us with a real time opportunity, this is a real time opportunity that we learn and groom ourselves to be tolerant in our debates, to take emotions out of our debate, and generally to behave very well. Sometimes you go to, you see, sometimes when you go to the main parliament there, it's sad. Probably some of you don't know. Speaker can commence a whole business with three people in the house. Hmm. The culture of not being on time. It's only to the street when there is a they, when there are controversial issues in the house that needed MPs to come and vote. That is why you see them there. So what was the answer of you going around telling people to vote for you to come and represent their interest? And that's why I like my MP so much. When he was pushing that LGBTQ plus RS people, that particular bill, people were all over the place acting that. Is it the only work he used to do as an MP? The roads and water issues. The MP is not a developmental agent. On behalf of the Ningo Pampam people, we are saying that we don't want LGBT, so it should lead that particular crusade for us. What is Honorable Kodo leading in Parliament? The other MPs that we have never heard of them in Parliament before, even making public statement that have not even appeared on any television station speaking about any issue. So these are the people that we are following and gradually we will take over them and we are telling ourselves that we are the future leaders. Please, let's stop joking and then begin reviving ourselves from those particular trends. Otherwise, the future, the future is very bloody. I don't know probably if you are seeing this in that particular instant. The future is very bloody. So it is very important that we know all these ones. In the parliamentary behavior, it's very important again that we behave ourselves very well. That is why when you go to the UA, the UK House of Commons and the House of Lords, I don't know probably if you understand the UK parliamentary systems. They have the House of Commons and the House of Lords. One is under one. The House of Commons are these normal MPs, and the one the House of Lords are on top of them. As we have Senate and then the House of uh, representatives, Nigeria practice the federal system whereby we have the Senate system and then the House of America also has the same structure. UK MPs were calling for the head of George, uh, uh, John Boris and they had his head. <laughs> Nobody can call for the head of Akufaro in Ghana, any of the MPs. Nobody. 
Even his own party members called for his head to resign. And then the pressure that comes, do you know why? Because the UK MPs are up to tax. There was one time a UK, one of the, the MPs who is a minister, ought to be present in parliament to deliver a statement to answer. And then he was late by 10 minutes. He resigned. Yeah. We have MPs who have not been in parliament since the commencement of the 8th parliament. He, he is there. <laughs> a home minister is in, is, is in US or UK, whatever, running gender ministry street uh, in, 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 via Zoom. <laughs> he is running, she's running the, the, the ministry via, uh, listen, virtual, virtual. And nobody saying anything to anybody. And these are the people that we are looking up to. So in the situation whereby in the future we all pick up that one, then I can equally be in Afghanistan. <laughs> yes. Looking at a few things and be managing Bingo Bamam constituency from there. And nobody will tell me anything. Oh, yes. And it is very sad that things are going that way. And if we are the future leaders, and I'm again telling you that we are not the future leaders. Yes, probably we'll get president from China. It will be a bit better. No, Russia. Yes. Putin, kind of. Very important. Trump kind of president in Ghana to take over the affairs of the country. But if we really want to be the future leaders as we are yearning and as the anthem is going, then it is impending on us to begin learning. If I ask all of us sitting here, how many books have you read in this year? Aside from the Harvard and Project Red, all of us sitting here have not read any book. Me, I have not read any book. <laughs> you, I have not read any book. So how then are we developing ourselves and preparing ourselves for the future? Sometimes we hear some of the, the old people, like uh, 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 Samuel Okudetu, not Abrakwa, his uncle. Mm -hmm. When they speak, we like it so much by virtue that they have read and learned, or learn and relearn. We are on TikTok dancing. <laughs> We are on social media, we are on WhatsApp status, sharing uh, uh, memes and the likes. We've not read. And even our age, social media and then the, 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 the advancement of the internet has made resources closer to us than before. But we are not taking opportunity upon ourselves to learn. And it is all this attitude that we are saying that we are the future leaders. I'm sorry, we are not the future leaders. We are not. Because to be a good leader is born out by reading. Reading, 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 reading. Probably when His Excellency Laida spoke to me about the first time to appoint me speaker. We have never had any speaker of parliament from anywhere yeah. in the history of eight years house. Yeah. So I had no other option to learn Takashi mm -hmm. and come and preside over that particular city. By virtue that the internet was closer to us and the resources were very closer to us, we took the opportunity upon ourselves, Honorable Jones and I, to. We have not attended law school, mm -hmm. but we are far better off than the law students in the law schools who have drafted <laughs> their constitution. Yes. Oh, yes. It is true by virtue that we are learning and reading. But, and sometimes I get worried again on the future in their stars. Sometimes when I watch TikTok, me, I'm on TikTok. Because I learned there. All the engineering, IT, and the technical styles, I, I majority of the channels are there that do short videos, how to do stuff. And I learned a lot from there. But you we will see our future wife dancing and exposing <laughs> their body parts on, on the on the app there. Somebody who could not even prepare slides or presentation is able to do complex video and dance and do simulations and put different videos all together. We are the future leaders, eh? <laughs> are we? On this, on, are we the future leaders? <laughs> we, 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 we are not the future leaders. <laughs> if look at what is going on, we the men are finding sh short ways to make it in life. Either by doing uh, the normal, uh, the friend is saying, uh, 
how to put it, uh, fraud, fraud, fraud stuff, or we are hanging our neck on Betway and the likes. Our wives are also on social media dancing, <laughs> exposing their body parts and the likes. And when we sum all this thing up, and we are telling ourselves that we are the future leaders, we, those who have also zoomed ourselves into the political space to learn, we are seriously learning how to steal and how to mismanage the little resources that had been allocated to us. Mm. I don't know, probably, if any, any of us is getting the argument that I'm putting out. Our wives are on the social media. Sometimes, when I get to TikTok and I see some of them dancing, exposing their body, I say, hey, in the future, it will be interesting, though. When I want to insult your grandmother, I just go for one of the videos. <laughs> then look at your grandmother. Uh, sorry. And then, because the internet don't forget, we, 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 I, don't, I don't know whether we, we think about the things we do in this early age. Would you have thought that in any way, if Lodina, Mahama, or Rebecca Kufado were of this lifestyle in their youthful age, Nanada would be able to, Nanado or Mahama would be able to contest for president? No. They will drag you, hmm? even on the, on the basis that probably they might have not been doing what we are supposedly accusing them of. Self, we are doing Nana, uh, listen, Sawa Boni and Papanu. <laughs> Look at the harm that is causing them, even at their age. And we now that we have evidence, Victoria and video evidence to prove what we are saying. I don't know, I just, I, 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 I just request why in the future, Minister of uh, 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 Trade or whatever. Then the wife, some 20 years ago, video of, ah, you're in trouble. <coughs> so it is very important. And I would have wished that the, the opportunity that the youth in part parliament has presented to us would have come. You see, we learn. That's why I always tell us in parliament that it is an opportunity for us to learn. Me, let me tell you one thing. I'm an engineering student. But when I don't tell you I'm an engineering student, you never know that I'm an engineering student. A lot of people don't think I'm an engineering student too. A lot. So when I declared my intention, that was March. And I said that I'm an electrical engineering student. So a lot of people were, ah, you are, you are an engineering student. Yes, I am. Yes, I am an engineering student. But I seem more to be like a marketing purchasing student because I talk them a lot and the likes. If by virtue that the opportunity that SRC has presented to me. I've taken opportunity. Eh, me, I've never known what is balance but for you. <laughs> when I ask a, you just ask a random student, eh, what is balance but for it? Hmm? Don't, don't ask the accounting and then the banking and finance. Line. Even some of them, it will be hell. When you ask them to explain what is budget deficit and budget surplus, hell. Even a secretary student, some of them, a random student, when you ask the features of a memo, it is going to be here. Mm. So we build ourselves in such a way that irrespective of where we, the place is, we are going to be very versatile and play any role. And it is very important that we look at it that way. That's why sometimes you will see that they will appoint somebody without any background to a particular ministry and the person is performing very well even though the person is not having what's the name that particular background steady background but the person is performing very well it's because the person has taken the opportunity upon himself to learn or learn and relearn for the work trump did, was not a politician he was a businessman and he zoomed into politics by virtue of some issues that happened at the latter part of his his government that saw him away. We saw how he performed. No nonsense. Yeah. We saw Honorable John Peter Mew when he was Lands and Natural Resources Minister without that background. Performing very well. And Honorable Ken of Ferreira, who has been an investment banker, Minister of Finance, we are not seeing top. <laughs> so it should be telling you that you may be good. Oh, yeah, me, I say that really. Me, I don't care. They should, be, they should disown you from the party, their own problem. <laughs> we should take the opportunity upon ourselves to learn, unlearn and relearn. And that's the only way we can be the future leaders that we are gaining for. So parliamentary business is very important. Today, 
if I'm elected MP for Nigo Pamprang constituency, parliament business will, be, will not be new to me. Likewise, parliament business will not be new to Honorable Adi Edison uh, uh, Agbaode. Neither will it be new to Honorable Felix, neither will it be new to uh, uh, Madam Speaker, because we have learned on learn and relearn using the little opportunity at our end, preparing ourselves. When uh, uh, at the first anniversary special sitting, when Honorable Etonam came there, he said that he told himself that at age 32 he will be an MP. He did not know what it would take for him to be an MP or not, but he started preparing himself for an MP. He is not an MP by hand, he's a DC, it's the same work. And now he's, he's, he's performing. Among the, the young DCs and government appointees, he's doing very well. Had it been that he had not prepared himself for that particular work, he has come to learn on the job. And politics is in such a way that when you learn on the job, you will spend so many years learning. By the time you finish learning, time has been wasted, and what you are supposed to do, you make your followers handicap, stress them throughout. By the time you get everything at your disposal, time is already far spent. And it's very important. So I would say that as we are preparing for the future and our parliamentary business, I wish to see all of us probably 12 years from now. Probably I'm giving myself 2036. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's very important. 2036. I don't know the timeline that you have given to yourself. And you see, before I conclude, I would like to say this. Before I conclude, I would like to say this. Before any of us want to zoom into a political space, please, let us all work within our space to get a career first. Let's get something doing before we zoom into politics. In the situation whereby we want to stand on the shoulders of Tescon and Tein and boom into an appointment, when you, be, when, 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 when you go out of politics, you become useless. That's why you will see that a particular DCE or a particular minister in this particular regime has become so vulnerable to the stand that even what he or she will eat is a problem. It's because he or she has not gotten the career to be partisan. Let's look at Honorable Bernard Okubo. He's a medical doctor. So with or without parliament, he's a medical doctor. Anywhere in the world, he's a medical doctor. He will be employed anywhere. But let's look at Honorable Adeche. Listen, Honorable Agba and myself. Mm. Boom, national service. Then we have, we, we, they have given us political appointment. Now our party goes into position. <laughs> so that is why it is, it is amounting to corruption all over the place. Because I want to amass a lot of money because I know I'm not having any practicing profession. To, so that should it happen that my party go out of power, I can be able to sustain myself on that to the next election. So probably currently what we don't know is MVP, those who don't have any profession, are accumulating a lot of money down for us to be able to, to, to sustain themselves probably for how many years they'll be spending the position. Who knows? So it's very important that you get a profession before we think about it. And then to get a profession, we are all in our space and let us think very well. Use the opportunities at our disposal. And that's what I want to offer. Normal thousand meetings. And sometimes it saddens my heart so much to the fact that a thousand will use an allocated fund to organize a program that will be good at us. We won't come. Hmm. Yes. But let them put stone boy in the story. We will go and dance. Yes, it is an entertainment group. But what is it contributing to the group of future? How about the community at the government? I'm not saying that show is very important. It's very important that I was there. Even though I didn't, I didn't get to go to the government. But I was there. If not at all, I was there. So it is very important that in capacity building, we must read it. So I mean, every now and then I tell them, I tell them, the books are in the room. The books look at me, I look at them. We smile, I tell them. 
when you start reading, they look very, very strange. Very, very strange. So the more you read, the more, because some of the things, probably one of those, nobody thought the majority of the things is that. You. Nobody thought the majority of the things you do. Me. Nobody thought the majority of the things I do. But let me that I have to read them by myself. So the best education is self education. For the, the systematic procedure that I could go through to crash, do not have to put the lights to get certificate in it's just possible to get what you want. If you don't serve them, it's going to be troublesome in the future. And this is the way we are not doing it. How many books have you bought by yourself in the last five years? Like me. Even Dari said you don't buy that. How many books have you bought by yourself? Not the one that probably my man can be share with another book. That you bought by yourself. No, you let's, let's take back. We have a majority of the books online that we have downloaded. How many books for self government have you downloaded the e copy just to pretend that you were reading? How many? But I can say on the record that how many books have you downloaded in the last five years? In, in, in June alone, I got a hundred and fifteen gig worth of, 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 of videos. Yes. <laughs> that is how sad situation has come to look like. We are not investing in our future. And sometimes I, I, I feel very sad. Insulting. I don't know why all of a sudden that has been the, the order of the day. Insulting every people. Who are you? Even when you were going with the extended family system, you cannot insult a single one. That is even too much ahead of you. You cannot do them. Who are you to insult a single one? That is even rubbish. <laughs> yes. But now, a whole city president, a whole former president, by the fact that he or she shares an idea that you do not agree with politically or ideology. You don't agree with it. You can insult the self person. Come on. How? How have you gotten here? And this is the future. So just imagine what we are doing with our age. Then our junior brothers who are cows. Who now doesn't even respect us in the household. Who doesn't even send to tell their own goal? Those are the type of people that are coming to be the followers when we are leaders. Just imagine, and you are telling them that you them. It will be bloody well on this. So until we begin to streamline the the the, the settings and the system that we have, it will be very difficult for us as future leaders as we are all here before. So I thank you all very much for the opportunity to share the, the little knowledge that I have with you as far as the topic of discussion is concerned. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, speaker, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm a town the Honorable Deputy Director of Youth Empowerment Movement in charge of Parliamentary Affairs for a wonderful presentation. They have learned a lot just listening to me for this 53 minutes you have spoken. Uh, that was powerful. Madam Speaker, I just have a very short question. Um, with respect to best parliamentary behavior, um, what control does the presiding officer have? in modulating the behavior of parliamentarians in situations of the house going to disarray and then attitudes and then all those going out of proportion. Uh, does the presiding officer have as much as 60% control, 90% or 30% control of the situation in that regard? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for question. I say with my experience, the speaker in having 100% control of the house. In every parliament, for a house to go in disarray or not, it is invented with the speaker and not the, 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 the MPs. Depending on the subject matter of the discussion and who I will call. So, for example, when we are discussing income and expenditure account, where we are finding it very difficult to understand a particular expenditure line item, 
I'm not following the light of honorable and his blood. No. Because honorable and his player is going to worsen the situation that you already have. Our way is coming to worsen the situation. So as I rightly said, you mean when the subject matter is under, under discussion and you want to make the submission and you start on an emotional and sentiment base that is going to lead to the attacking of someone's personality, I'll stop you. So that's why if you observe already, there's too much tension in the house. Then I call, can an honorable member move a motion for the acceptance of the other people? Then there, an honorable man will want to push an agenda that is going to delay and put the house in misery. He will sit down because that is not what the motion that you are supposed to move is concerned. So if you are not going to move for the acceptance of the other people, please sit down for somebody else. If you permit the person to proceed with whatever his or her hair is going to say, it's going to result in another issue. So for example, I don't know I got is here speaking. Then honorable and his player stands on his feet and tells the whole world that he doesn't understand and all what honorable and proud is, it doesn't make sense. If I proceed for honorable and his player to proceed on that particular target, the house will probably be in the way. So it is very important that whoever the presiding officer is should have much control over the house. And then you must know your enemies very well. Me, I know everybody and your, your ability and what you say in a particular time. So when there is too much controversy in the house, I'm not going to call honorable Nabi Peter. I'm not going to call honorable Atal. I'm not going to call honorable Ernest Plan. Depending on the gravity of the tension in the house and who you call to speak on a particular subject matter. If you don't know these dynamics, you are going to call a very controversial person to come and worsen the already situations on the floor. And that is why a lot of people don't know. And you realize that every now and then the house is always fighting. That's what I mean. If you could observe, probably some people say, I don't allow them to speak. I do choose and, and choose and pick kind of something. No. It's by virtue that I want the house to continue. Sometimes you realize that probably if they ask Honorable Abadi a question, probably I'll take that question and answer. Because the Honorable Member asking that particular question knows the answer, but just want to draw the house back. So, as a presiding officer, it's very important that you know the ability of all the MPs. And it's very important that to the question Robert Jones asked, the presiding officer should have 100% control, not even 99%, 100% control of how the house ought to conduct himself. Because once you lose control, the house will be in the area. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Okay. Closing remarks. Closing remarks. Okay. So, without any question, I thank you all very much for the opportunity. And as we discussed, the future is very pregnant. And for us to be able to give birth to very responsible children as future leaders, it is very important on that we learn, on learn. Take out the politics of insults. Begin growing ourselves by learning and reading outside our scope of learning. And let's take every single opportunity presented to us very serious. Any seminar, any opportunity, any occasion organized, even if it is not in your line of study, one way or the other, you may learn one or two things. And every opportunity that is being, being given to you as a leader, it is an opportunity for you to learn, or learn and relearn. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'd like to welcome Mr. Felix, first deputy speaker of youth parliament, on, to give us a presentation on humility and honesty. Yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity given. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, with my colleagues, friends uh, in this regard. 
to share a word or two on the subject matter, humility and honesty, virtues of youth leaders. Uh, with the permission of the speaker, I would uh, want my session to be a little interactive. So if the permission can be given, uh, I want to table a question before we start. I want, to, I want to table a question before we start. And this question goes to all honorable members. And this question is very simple. Where do you see yourself in the near future? What or uh, where are you assuming that you will find yourself in the near future? What will you be doing? What will you need? So that's my simple question. I'll be coming back for my answers in the course of the presentation. My name is Felix Pakwe Adiche and I am uh, currently the first deputy speaker of this honorable house. I've held a plethora of positions that include being one time speaker of HTS RC Parliament being a committee member at a point, being a departmental president, and some others that I wouldn't like to bore you with. But I mentioned these positions basically because I want us to focus on leadership. I would want us to focus on leadership. The speaker who just finished giving us a lecture touched a lot on leadership. In fact, uh, he said we are not the future leaders. I beg to have a confused stand on what he said because in the course of him presenting it, when he mentioned it at first, I didn't agree. But in the course of presenting it, I found a lot of sense in what he said. Just like his topic spoke about debate, you could see that he went about the debate aspect of what he spoke about very well. I read a very funny post online that seemed to align with what he said. Somebody said, instead of going to IMF for loan, why don't we go and loan leaders rather? <laughs> Basically implying that our problem is not money. Because if we go for the loan, it's not like we've not gone for it before. As a country, we've gone for the loan before. And then it was given to us. We came and we managed it so well that we have to go for another one again. <laughs> so instead of going for the loan again, let's go for the loan managers so that we can be able to uh, address our issues. As a matter of fact, our lineage of leadership for a while now has not been inclined to certain characteristics that leaders ought to possess. Paramount in these two is part of the topic we are talking about. And it is humility and honesty. Some of us, as a matter of fact, even to ourselves, we are not honest. So, how much more being in leadership positions? How do we intend to be honest to people if we can't even be honest to ourselves? So, I'll take some few points I've noted down to a little research on this particular topic. So, leadership is about service. Now, when we say service, we are not talking about national service here. We are trying to talk about how you are able to serve, your tendency to serve. Now, in general sense, when we are, we are talking about service, it comes to light in this point. If somebody wants to assume a position, I'm coming to serve, I'm coming to serve, I'm coming to serve. When a person is given the opportunity to serve, 
Then the person wants everybody who gave him the opportunity to serve to now serve him, mm -hmm. which is actually downgrading our style of leadership with time. Come to think of it, if I was I was in a conversation with one of my learned friends, and he made some valid points that we were three in the conversation. One person is. A very good politician I am trying to be one and the last person is a political critic so the political critic is trying to make this point that it's emanated from the fact that uh, the paramount chief of the Asobi state Toby Apete the 14 had well depends on how the blogger wants to put it but has refunded a money that was given to him now, my friend was speaking from this perspective that we have allowed you to take on a leadership role and then we have given you the nod to uh, serve us. Then after that, your service is now costing us more than even if we didn't even have any leader at all, it would have been better. Those are some of the things that are gradually chopping our democracy. As a matter of fact, with time, if we don't look at some of these things, we might end up uh, locking our, ourselves in a position whereby we cannot be able to do anything uh, for ourselves. Because today it is uh, my turn to be the leader. And the, I'm, I'm, I'm one of these people that I'm trying to build a business personality out of myself. So anything that comes under my power to manage, I want to watch it from a business perspective. So uh, honorable members should permit me if I use a lot of business-like example. Now let's zoom into our SLC setup uh, as students because we are talking about youth here and a, lot, a chunk of the youth are students. So if you are you have your own business and your business is about maybe I am into a tracker installation for now and my business the capital I invested into my business is thousand Ghana cities and then the profit I'm making out of the business is five thousand Ghana cities now if I should be paying myself in fact forcing the business to save me more than how I serve the business or I pay myself maybe more than half of the profits that comes out of the business what am I doing to my business am I helping the business to grow or not in the same light if you look at our national setup certain amount of money that are paid to certain individuals if I were to be in their shoes I would equally take it who doesn't like good things but come to think of it in the long run if we have problem what do we do? We solve it. If you are looking at things from a personal benefit perspective, then you might end up doing yourself, your country, your generation, and the generations to come a lot harm than good. So as a leader, as a youth, as we found ourselves now, anywhere you see yourself in a leadership capacity, know that you are there to serve. You are there to be the one helping people. You shouldn't be too difficult to approach. Our, our, our leader is one that we cannot talk to. Then how is he been leading us? Mm -hmm. So we should be able to pay attention to those sides. You must have inner strength. Now, when I talk about inner strength, I'm talking about discipline. To be able to humble yourself, it takes a lot of discipline. Over the years, I've tried to follow one or two mentors and then I've tried to learn a lot from them. And if you pay attention to some of them, I was talking with my HOD the last time, and he was telling me, Felix, there are certain things that you can do in certain capacities that you cannot do in certain capacities. Now, as a normal student, average student, I can just walk from here headed to the university main gate and then I'll be pressed. 
anywhere I feel like I can just when I just see some small bush, I can just then remove my spray machine and I start work. But imagine you see your HOD, one corner wrong, he's doing it. You see uh, Provisi, DC, you see these people in those capacities just anywhere and then they are uh, urinating. It's directly or indirectly, you will not see it linked at that moment but one way or the other psychologically he has reduced himself and in that regard it takes a lot of discipline for you to tell yourself that i will do this i will not do this in the regard of uh, leadership because you know where you want to find yourself in the near future the honorable amano spoke about the fact that some people are doing certain things in the name of trend so you might find them maybe doing nasty stuff in the name of trend. But in the near future, if those nasty stuff want to get back at you, can you be able to withstand it? These are questions we should be asking ourselves as youth. In the same light, we must be able to accept mistake. We must be able to accept flaws. We must be able to accept corrections. Take it or leave it, nobody is perfect. During my tenure as speaker, I did something that paid off a lot. When I assumed the role, I was speaking with the Right Honorable Amano, I was speaking with the Honorable Jones and other comrades in the fraternity. And I was speaking up small, small. But it got to a point, as a matter of fact, I started understanding some of the dynamics of the job that I was supposed to do. It got to a time my house was very, I don't know, was not constituted at all. And then I, I placed it upon myself to try to understand what the problem is and then to solve it. When I started researching into, into what was the cause, I realized that a chunk of the problem was coming from me as the leader of the house. Because as the leader of the house, you ought to know your people. And one mistake I did in the earlier part of my job was distancing myself from the people because when I started working, I, I realized that certain people didn't uh, believe in the same ideologies that I believe in. So you could see that they are basically trying to uh, make points that seek to bring controversy. Instead of trying to calm them down instead of trying to uh, appreciate their perspective and then work things to, into the right direction. I tried to take the bullet sometimes. And after some time, upon consultation and learning, when I came into contact with this point that states that you should be able to accept your mistake, I realized that, no, this is a mistake I've made and the mistakes are going to happen. But we still have the opportunity to correct ourselves along the line. The next point I have here is to seek input from others. Honorable members, it is not a mistake. Sankopa and Yeboni. It is not a mistake to go back and pick something. It is not. In fact, there was this uh, post I read some time ago. There was an engineer who designed a car. When he finished designing a car, uh, the architects who drew the car, the CAT specialist, the machine, the design specialist who designed the car, the, uh, the engineer himself who did, and then all the team that did the car. After finishing the car, they came together to uh, celebrate the car. Then it was time to move the car out of the factory or the garage that it was developed. And then they realized that the, the roof of the car was, uh, the entrance was a bit uh, shorter than the roof of the car, implying that the car cannot pass the entrance, just about an inch. So it became a controversy. Then the engineer said, oh, I've not done well. I should have made the car a little shorter. Then everybody started blaming themselves. And then they started suggesting possible ways they can deal with the problem because the problem has come. 
Now, in the course of the discussion, the, the architect who designed the whole building even said, oh, if it is possible, instead of touching a car, they will come and chop up some part of the gates, the entrance, so that the car can be able to pass there and go. Then, the security man who, in this scenario, is a, a, a nobody, was standing there looking at them and wanted to make an input. So, over the time, they realized that he was fidgeting to make an input and then they didn't really agree with taking an input from a common uh, gate man, but the, they finally agreed to take uh, an advice from him and he said, oh, instead of trying to uh, maybe rework on the car, work on the entrance, why not just deflate the tire a little, which reduces the height of the tire and then it uh, goes a long way to reduce the height of the whole car and then the car can be able to pass. Oh. Honestly, they did it and then their car was out of the garage with ease. Oh. What is this trying to tell us? We should be able to take views from a lot of people. And yes, take it or leave it. Even fools grow. So if we are saying we are taking as, uh, advice from experienced people, we are taking advice from old people, at the end of the day, the advice you take, the implementation is based on you, the individual implementing. We will not come and say, oh, it was based on the advice that uh, Honorable Jones took from Honorable Amano, that's why he did that. No. We will say Honorable Amano did it, or Honorable Jones did it. So when you are in position, you should be able to take six views and then see the information. Try to analyze and see which one best fits into your situation and then you opt for that one. As a leader, you must be genuine. You must be trying as much as possible to maintain your integrity. Take it or leave it. Some, some of us over the years were suffering to maintain integrity because we were painted with certain things. Some of the information when you hear, you will be shocked, like the, the, somebody just concluded that, okay, there's a conspiracy happening in management. And because you are part of the management, maybe the management team knows that you as a singular person, when that issue is brought to you, you will not tolerate it. In fact, I'm standing here and I'll say it on record that certain things happened in my various uh, positions that even my people around me knew that this is who I am. If you bring this one before me, frankly, honestly, I'll do yawa. And so if they are discussing those things, it's difficult to bring it to me because you already know who I am. And that is the kind of reputation I want to build for myself. That is how I want people to see me. So as a youth, as we are grow growing up, we should be able to uh, look at some of these things. We should be able to treat other people with respect. This is very important. I chanced upon a, a, a podcast by one of the people I now follow very much, Busi uh, Tembakwayo, he's a South African speaker, and he tried to break this down in a perspective that opened my eyes. He said that when he goes anywhere in the world and then he has his phone with him, no matter what happens, no matter what the situation should be, if he is able to get his phone within 30 minutes, any country he goes, he should be able to get a presidential escort out of wherever he is. Now, ask yourself, in what capacity would he be for him to be able to speak publicly like that? Because this is somebody who has been there. He has held a plethora of positions of which he made sure that the network that he built with all these people was solid. So anytime, any day, he is positive that since he has dealt you a hand, you will be able to deal him the same hand when he needs help. And that is 
another perspective to treating other people with respect that I am looking at attaining one day. So it depends on you, the individual. You should be able to monitor some of these things in your life. As a leader, there's a lot of learning to do. As a youth that is seeing yourself in the near future to be a leader, there's a lot of learning to, to do. I asked a question earlier and then by this time I'm sure a lot of us are uh, uh, finalizing with our answers. I heard something recently from a friend. Uh, I'm a very religious person or spiritual and I've read a lot in the Bible but I've never uh, seen this text before. So the friend was telling me that some people were born leaders, other people were born slaves. So I was contemplating. So if what he said is true, because he said it is in the Bible, so honestly it means it is true. Then what am I born to be? Am I also part of the slaves or I am part of the leaders? Then around the same era, I chanced upon another, I'm a writer person, I learn a lot from the internet. I chanced upon another writer which said a guy went to a malam that he wanted to uh, know his future, whether he would be successful or not. Then the malam was like, okay, and he drew a circle on the ground and then took an ant and kept it on one side and told the guy that this ant is going to move. If this ant moves and enters into the circle, you'll be successful. If the ant doesn't enter the circle, you are a failure. So the guy was like, okay, the ant should move. The ant started moving, moving, moving close to the circle and just stopped. The guy was wondering what was wrong with this ant. Then the ant turned and then I don't know whether it has uh, sensed food in a different direction. The ant started walking to that direction. The guy looked at the ant and was wondering to himself. So the conclusion of the whole story is that he is going to be poor, he won't make it in life. Oh yeah, he used his hand, picked the ant and kept it in a circle. Wow. End of story. And this is the answer to the question that was bothering my mind because I was asking myself, will I be a slave, will I be a leader? But no, I realized that you have a take on which one you find yourself in. You might be born a slave. Maybe the, the people who have the foresight vision can see you and tell you, you this life you will be a slave. I don't know any pastor that does that, but if that is what you, that is what your, uh, your, I don't know, your posterity or I don't know how to say it. How do people describe those kind of things that uh, you, this is what you'll be in this life. Maybe that is what is written. Maybe a palm reader will read your palm and tell you that you will not make it in life. But I believe as humans, you equally have a, a take on what comes out of you. So please, this is an advice to all of us as youth. We should be able to consciously have a take on what happens in our life. And in that regard, I'll, I'll, I'll try to uh, uh, veer into some of the things that uh, Honorable uh, Aman Ona spoke about. We should be able to be conscious about some of our efforts, some of our actions that we take. There's this saying that goes that respect is earned and not commanded. Well, over the years, I've tried to understand being a prefect back in my secondary school and the lies. It got to a point I realized that, you know, what the people were saying. Before the people who handed over to us, handed over to us, we told us that in the school, the respect is not earned. It is commanded. We take it by force. The violence shall take it by force. So if you are not ready to take it forcefully, you will not get some. I bet you, I tried playing with the nice guy. Uh, my position dealt more with organizing of programs, school programs, arrangement of the place and all. And then, if you try being nice to the, oh, please, 
come and do it. Come. Oh, no, 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 no. The people weren't responding. So I finally decided to take the advice of the earlier people and then we started using violence. <laughs> now it is an ado system, so I don't know how they are doing it. But back then we were treated with violence, so we too we knew how to use the violence very well. So I was very smallish, and then some of the juniors were averagely bigger. But when it comes to violence, there's no regard for anybody. We're actually using the violence. Then there was this one day, the juniors weren't in school again. So it was left with we, the seniors, and no. So if you are using violence to treat the juniors and then they were doing the work for you, your mates, are you going to take cane and belt and lash them or what? Then I was wondering how we were supposed to have, uh, I think, uh, a church service or something like that, that we were supposed to arrange the dining hall and then hold the program there. So I talked of it for a while, then I came into the dining hall during breakfast and I spoke to my colleagues very well. They didn't take whatever I said serious. So after the dining, everybody just went their way and then they went to get ready to come for the program. It was almost time for the program, the chaplain came and then we realized that the work wasn't going on. I was also seated there, I was thinking, what will I do? Then something just told me that, oh, leadership by example, today do experiment and see what will come out of it. Then I started packing the things myself. I will go for act, I will uh, take the uh, dining hall table, I will possibly take it. It was very big. Ours is a form and a metal. So we take the form out, come back, come and take the metal and take it outside. Then I saw that my assistant also came and started helping. The dining hall prefect came, started helping. Before you know, the seniors started to pin it one by one, and everybody that comes will just pick one thing. Within I didn't even realize when we finished doing all the arrangements and people were still been going around looking for work to do. That was the day I realized that you know, there's a way you can be able to go about everything differently instead of always using violence. So yes, indeed, the ancient uh, uh, saying that is respect is earned and not commanded, it is still applicable. Just that you have to be able to be smart about how you uh, try to get it. Now, another thing you should be doing now if you are looking at becoming a leader is building network. Where uh, the Honorable Amano spoke about the fact that right now we are in the same suit. In fact, we, we killed ourselves during national service so that after the national suffering, we will be able to get local fuel then uh, we don't have anybody anywhere so our story didn't go that way but one thing i can boast of right now is that within that short period in fact if i'm working at the roadside right now any of the senior men or any of my bosses that i work under most of them even stop who was i in the workshop i was i did my service in a workshop i was just in a, a common uh, maybe, oh, come and remove the tire, I'm going to remove the tire. Come and remove this, I remove. Come and put this, I put. But I've been able to build that relationship with them because I know where I'm going. I was thinking that relationship was going to help me to secure a job or something. But since it didn't work out, that doesn't mean I should maybe uh, say, oh, because I didn't get an opportunity to work with the organization, I should uh, cut the relationship. No. As it stands now, if I have any problem with, uh, let's say, a colleague reports a problem to me that, oh, my car is having this problem, I can be able to take a car to that place and do everything free of charge. Nobody will worry me about anything. And that is the network I built for myself. Uh, during the, uh, the SHS students, uh, time their placements came and then they were going to school, there were a lot of things that taught me about network. So I have a junior sister who was also part of the people who uh, got the opportunity to go to school. And then I don't know how the system is working. You know, the system, uh, maybe we should go and get uh, Jonas to come and 
put some energy into our own because our own 24 7 and yeah, Juma, it is not working. So, well, I won't blame the system anyway. My sister was giving, uh, initially, she was giving a school, and then we were all complaining about the school. We wanted her to go to this school, not this school. And then, last, last, yeah, somebody was like, oh, the things have changed, though. They went to check her, check. She, did it. she wasn't even given any school this time around. I mean, they gave us some were complaining. Then it became an issue in the house. Who do you know? Who knows you? We're contemplating this thing. School resumed. My sister was still in the house two weeks. Then finally, my mom made a call to one of the headmistress who used to be a work colleague. And then when she called her, she was like, Oh, how are you? Okay, so I want my daughter to come and spend vacation, uh, come, to come and stay with you, not vacation anyway, to come and stay with you. Then the headmistress was like, oh, come and stay with me, how? Like, I was like, oh, she has finished secondary school. She's supposed to go to school. When we went to check the system, there was no school allocated to her. So uh, this is me trying to ask you if you can get opportunity for my daughter to, uh, to come to your school. Then this woman was like, oh, uh, there's no chance to so show contact other school. So that very moment, my mom dropped the call. I said that my mom was worried because probably I don't know. Maybe she felt she had helped and then wanted the same hand to be dealt her. Then about five minutes on, then her phone rang again. Then uh, the headmistress told my mom, "Ah, you are talking about Achupi, like my little sister." Then my mom was like, "Yes, ah." They have grown already. Then the conversation shifted from finding school to their own staff. By the time you know, oh, the next day, no, she should come to the school. They will do everything. And that is the network my mom has built. So she can, any day and any time, call on that network and it will help. Some of us, we have very good network. Like me, for instance, I know Nana Kufuado, uh, His Excellency, the President of the Republic. I know John Dramani Mahama, the yeah. former president. I know Abam Bagwin. Uh, even though I only saw him once at whole sports stadium. Uh, that one cried. He, the car was leaving before I came to pass there, but I know his name. <laughs> yes, you must understand. Yes. And who else do I know? In fact, uh, I'm trying to learn from the people at the app. So I know a lot of them. I can mention their names. I can even give you a bio of them. But Honorable members, do they know me? I'm inside here with you. So if, if uh, somebody was like, why do I always tend to treat everybody around me? In fact, it got to a time everybody was honorable in my life. Whether you are a, 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 a political person, whether you are part of parliament, student, anybody, they are if you call me, you know, honorable, honorable. Then somebody asked me that, why am I making everybody? I said, no, today you might not be honorable. Tomorrow you are my network, so I'm not playing with that one. The time my mom be, uh, was friends with the said head, headmistress, maybe she didn't have the intention that one day her daughter will need her help. In fact, as at that time, they were both working in education office, implying that the headmistress wasn't even in the teaching field to come and assume the position of a headmistress, but because of the relationship between them. So, as it stands now, well, some of uh, the honorable members here might be known by the honorables at the top. So, by virtue of Honorable Jones knowing the honorable descent, Kodo is my network. So, if I need honorable Kodo, I go to Honorable Jones, Honorable Jones will pull strings for me and we move. So don't be imagining your network too far. Your humility and selflessness now will create that impression in somebody else's mind. And take it or leave it, there's this beautiful thing I've learned over the period. People value you for what you bring to the table. It is one of the things that we will not agree with, but take it or leave it, that is the fact. You see, when we are here right now, and then I'm not of service to you, I'm not of help to you, you might undervalue me. But the day you will need my service, that day you can call me 10 times. 
Mm. Right now, if you call me once and I, I, I don't pick up, you can even insult me. But if you need my help, you call me 10 times and you'll be ready to even call more. Mm. So people value you for what you bring to the table. So as youth now, you should be looking at what you are bringing to the table. Other people bring money. So no matter what you do, the, the, in fact, go to heaven, come back to uh, Any political party should be in power. They are always on the move because they have the money. Somebody has the mouth to talk. Uh, uh, somebody like uh, Okujeto. I was reading about him the last time and then I was shocked. And nobody from nowhere. So the only thing he had was the fact that he was vocal. And then it led him to the path from wherever he was to where he is now. And it's even taking him further. So you should be able to equip yourself with skill sets that will make you relevant. Honorable members, even me that I'm standing here, some honorable members are here, I've never given you a call before. Not because of anything. Maybe at the material moment, I don't need your help. When I was uh, struggling with uh, SRC dues payment for some people in my class, they were complaining and they paid their dues, they are, they are whatever is not reflecting, they are showing evidence and all. I just took my phone, placed a call on uh, Honorable Agbaude, oh, Honorable, this is the problem, we said, oh, come over to the office and let's resolve it. People were here, plenty, I came, they were giving me fans, hey, speaker, 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 speaker. They didn't know that I was cutting the corners. Yeah, I, I greeted them all, oh, I wish them well, oh, it will be your turn very soon, eh? Then I went to cross them, I went. Then, aha, uh -huh, mutual, he sorted me out and I left. That is the network I've built with him. And because he has done that, take it or leave it. If another time he also needs a help that I can provide. If I refuse to provide it. In fact, there's something that happened in the Bible that I'm very, uh, I normally use in prayer. Uh, the king, Hezekiah, at a point in time was told that he was going to die. So when he was told that he was going to die, he turned and prayed to God. Now, this, watch the prayer. He told God that, I have done this and this and this for you. And this and this and this is what I want to do. And you are telling me that you want to take me away now for who to come and continue. In fact, even if you want to take me away against my will, can't you remember that I've done this and this for you? And quickly, God had to force the prophet who he sent to go back and reverse his own words. And so his care himself got tired of the life. What am I trying to say? Today, you will be of service to me. Tomorrow, I'll also be of service to you. So as you, we should be able to couple our virtues, our humility and honesty to, uh, to ourselves in such a way that in the near future, we can be able to get the chance to serve in diverse capacities. And the last thing I'll speak about is honesty. In fact, when they say honesty, eh, some of us, we are nowhere to be found. In fact, if honesty was free, a time that they were sharing to everybody, some of us, our phone will, will get deficit, will borrow. The, this thing, the honesty will come and borrow in our phone because we, are, we don't have anything about honesty in our lives. Even, I started this thing by saying that some of us are not even honest to ourselves. You get that, you know that, oh, this is white. It is white. But, when I, when I, when I, you and me, you say it is not white. And you, you fight this thing with the last drop of your blood. During, during uh, one of the programs that was held here, I became friends with one of the honorable uh, honorables of uh, the, one of the political parties. And he told me something very, uh, very useful to me. He told me that, Today, you are, you, you are young and then a lot of these political activists would like to play with your intelligence. But he's giving me an advice of a lifetime. I shouldn't lower my standard. I shouldn't lower my honesty. I shouldn't raise my standards. I shouldn't be a, 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 a proud person because today I know one of them. Honorable members, this advice I have clinged to to this day. 
because I realized that take it or leave it, you might not be able to uh, see its worth now. But if you start listening to the people around you, to go and insult people on uh, Twitter, to go and insult people on radio stations, the Honorable Amano said, if you don't have, if you can't insult people, you'll not be giving a talk time on radio because the person with the loudest voice is seemingly the right person. If you don't take into account these kind of things now, in the future, it will not be part of you. It takes a while to build some of these attributes. Honorable members, we should be particular and objective about who we want other people to see us to be. We shouldn't just be, uh, be floating in the air. Anybody and anything can see us and carry us anywhere. Honorable members, we should know that leadership, one way or the other, intertwines. So you one day cross path with somebody, one day somebody will cross path with you. So treat people right. Now, my very last comment before we take some questions. I went for a program in UPSA and it was dubbed uh, Field uh, UPSA, uh, UPSA Auditorium. I think they are going to bring one to HTU. They are, going, they are dubbing it also Field HTU Auditorium. And then what caught my attention was some three eyes they spoke about influence, impact, and income. And all these three points were dissected in such a way that you will understand that whatever you are doing now is adding up to the personality you are putting out there, which will account to the influence you have on society. The influence you have on society will determine your impact on society. And then the impact therein will work in the long run to provide you with income. So we should be able to watch these three eyes very well. How are you influencing society? How are you impacting society? And how is what you are doing in the long run going to bring in, uh, income into your life? The income might not be monetary, but I tell people, network is well. Because if I don't have food today to eat, Amano is my network, I'll go to his house, I'll go and eat, whether he likes it or not. And tomorrow, Amano can come to my house and come and eat. In fact, I can call him Amano because of that relationship. When we meet ourselves uh, anywhere, we try to vibe that way. So even though we might not be in constant uh, communication, the network is still there. And that is one thing I want all of us to build. This uh, YIP is trying to help us to build all those. So we shouldn't relent in trying to equip ourselves with all those skill sets. Honorable members, thank you very much. And I would like to take the answers to the questions I asked earlier when I started talking. I would like to take answers, but before then, let me take your questions with regards to humility and honesty, virtues for you leaders. Thank you very much.
their job you want to do or their house you want to build, their family you want to have. But I made an example with uh, BT that he said anywhere in the world he finds himself, if he places a call in less than 30 minutes, he should be able to get presidential escort. And it took him his whole life to build that. In the quest of building that is how he was able to build his influence and impact. And then as part of his income, which is the world, is the network he has created for him to get all those. So honorable members, this is the clue in case you are thinking that I'm asking you how many children you want to have in five years. That is not the question I'm asking. that the question that the speaker asked I was where do you want to see yourself tomorrow you don't know the future the next second can be the future you don't know who will be your help tomorrow maybe when I tell my world well, after living in Arabia I might see someone there maybe that's where my fortunes will start coming from so in the next future where I will see that I will lay my head comfortable where I'll see myself being comfortable. If I need something like I can uh, afford my own three square meal a day and then live a normal life as a normal human being without depending on anybody for the basic needs that I want for myself. That's where I want to see myself not being any big field, but anything can happen. If God says that's where I will be, I don't have any problem. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. In fact, what you've what said right now has reminded me of a quote that is trending of when Ghana had independence, some people were speaking about a uh, white man was asking them, what do you think about Mkuman and all those people were speaking. That time, independence to Ghana was a big deal. Right now, people are even asking that we go back to our colonial, our colonial masters and asking that it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Kwame Kumar didn't really mean it that way. So it's part time. We have finished our time. We should come and take over again. So I equally side with you. But uh, the God willing part you said, I want you to uh, massage it a little. You have to ask more efforts so that when the opportunity avails itself, you are prepared for it. Honorable Amanon spoke about uh, uh, being prepared for whatever opportunities might come your way. Uh, taking inference from what the Honorable Etonamplo said back in our anniversary city. Honorable members, any more uh, answers or questions? Honorable Thank you, Mr. Speaker in the House. Uh, uh, the next thing to do is like this. Because we know what goes to work, but we know the time because I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, yeah, so you have to set the table so that if tomorrow you are no longer in the team like this, you will set your average system for the work. So I want to be done with the first thing you now. Can be like for this as well. Allah. And to read people like the way you are, you get the whole people to do it. Yes, and that will prepare for you to become the kindness of you, pray in the future. Amen. 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 Uh. Some appointed speak of balance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And I will be in fact, I'm a dreamer. I'm learning to be a futurist. And then when I met, <laughs> A few charists. And when I met VT, I decided to be a presentist. No more a futurist again because 
the present determines the future. So I love dreaming big. In fact, when I tell you my dream right now, as I'm standing here, I'm looking at the whole world owing you. Uh, so it will sound funny now. In fact, come to think of it, somebody saying that any part of the world that he lands, he will, within 30 minutes you get presidential escort. Ask yourself, what if this young man lands in Tonga? I don't know how many of us know Tonga. If you find yourself in Haiti, how would you survive there? Those countries, some of them you don't even hear their names. If you find yourself in Oman, I don't know whether we've heard those countries like with the head, with head of those countries and their names. You will be wondering how, but he said that confidently. So, no dream is too big. If your dream is to become president of Ghana right now, in fact, we have restarted really our, our friendship again. Eh? Right now, we'll be checking up on you money, even money, even I'll go and leave the engineering and do uh, accountancy. You mm -hmm. understand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You understand, it's a process. I want to be prepared so that by the time we get the the I'll just go and take a call from Nukuriata and the likes, you know, when I'm there. Are we together? Thank you very much. Please, any more questions, submissions, additions? Okay. Honorable members, thank you very much for the opportunity. I believe that uh, during, during uh, my time as an MP, a friend made a comment. He said, we are in the school of learning. And see, take it or leave it, we grow, we learn. We learn, we grow. Honorable members, I shared a piece of what I know about humility and honesty, virtues of leadership. You also have a different perspective. I tolerate anything. Please, if you have anything, share with your friends, share with me, share with the next person available. Let us grow so that we will not plunder ourselves into the, this tangent of the current uh, way of governance that our country is doing. We will veer away from it so that we can be the future leaders. In fact, we can be today's leaders so that the future leaders that will be important will not have to be imported from outside, but our sperms will be the source of importation. And, <laughs> and our children will learn the right things from us. When our children learn the right things from us, then our children who are learning the right thing from us can be the future leaders. Because we are not able to learn the right thing from the people <laughs> on top of us now. Thank you very much for the opportunity. actually commend all the speakers who spoke now they did marvelously on the presentation they did the first speaker he touched on the best parliamentary behavior he spoke very well and depth into it that you cannot be the future leaders it's true he said it perfectly but it has led on to we seated here to make that vision not realistic but rather can't across it to become the future leaders. And also to the second speaker who touched on humility and honesty. We thank you for your depth explanation. We appreciate. But I have a statement I want to put across. The first speaker in his speech said, we don't learn on the job. Now I want to ask colleagues, does that mean the current economy we find ourselves, some leaders are learning on the job? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity. 
Some are learning on the job and some are not learning on the job. The policies in such a way that when you learn on the job, you, you, you stress the people. For example, SRC is just a one year there. So when you are not prepared and you get there, you are going to spend six months or the first semester to learn on the job. So it means that the whole of the first semester, nothing really productive is going to go on until the second semester when you understand the things properly. Otherwise, I say that probably you may not know what exactly is there, but taking lessons from people, not practically going to their end, we can learn from afar. None of us has been to Ghana's parliament before. None of us has taken a course in speakership and chairing meeting before. But by virtue that resources are closer to us by the help of internet, we've learned. We've said some of the things on the internet, what videos from there, and then we are there. So in the same spirit, probably, that's why I say that, the reason why I say that we are not the future leaders is that, let's look at the life of those who zoom into politics by being civil servants. Just compare Honorable Kude to Ablakwa hmm? and the likes of Honorable Kudu. Someone who had been a student leader straight from school was appointed minister. He has performed perfectly and that what gave him the Lord to win North Town. And you and I can attest to the fact that we want to move to North Town to be our constituency currently because of the work he's doing there in North Town currently. So by virtue that he had an opportunity to be student leader, he learned and utilized the opportunity to learn. The MP work that he had never done before had become so easy for him. If you, if you, if you put your eye down currently, the next NDC government, Ogutoto Ablaka, is the next foreign affairs minister. Automatic. Nobody can take it from him. The other time he visited the Indian High Commissioner to Ghana. He, he hosted the, the UK, it seems US or the UK High Commissioner in his constituency in Juapa. You see the link he has already begun building for himself. So immediately he is named Foreign Affairs Minister, ever. Mm -hmm. He is already prepared for whatever work. He has already built the protocols, the links with all the High Commissioners in Ghana. Imagining me, who have not even spoken to <laughs> one Chinese man roaming on the street. And I'm appointed, what's the name? Foreign Affairs Minister. I'm now going to go through the stress of your friend is uh, 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 putting together contact, calling them, paying courtesy call on them before I'm able to establish that grounds to work on. It may take me one year or the more. But you see where he has prepared himself already meeting all the high commissioners, having dinners with them. And I mean, I, I say, probably unless you don't see it. Okuja Tabla is automatically the next foreign affairs minister. So politics, because it is a period of time that we are going to serve, it is very important on us to begin preparing the grounds for yourself, knowing very well where you are going. But there is a situation whereby you just want to be minister for minister's sake, that somebody, a whole ministry will run via virtual, sitting somewhere, and a ministry will be running. And you can see that me, if we should rank all performing MPs, Okuja Tua Blakwa is going to be number one. My MP will be somewhere in the 200s, heading to the 250s. <laughs> yes, because when it comes to public appearance, debate on the floor, bringing up issues and constituency work, no other MP is doing it more than him. Because he has taken opportunity upon himself to learn and be preparing himself for the MP job. A perfect example is Okuja Tua Blakwa. So we can learn on the job, on the political, if it is you are going to teach. You know that I'm teaching from a 25 to C state when I'm retired. So I can have 10 years for myself to be learning on the job. No matter what the situation, if the children I teach are not too good, they will proceed to another class whereby another experienced teacher already will take care of them. In the field of engineering, when you are learning on the job, you are not allowed to do the mainstream work. So the senior engineers, same way when you become a lawyer, you practice the law for some time before you graduate to a judge, a high court judge, before you move into a Supreme Court judge. I get it. But in a situation of a political leader, if you don't learn, you will learn on the job and then you will end up stressing everybody. 
So you can learn on the job, basically, in a political field. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Speaker, in the House. Before I join the sitting to the 10th sitting, I'd like to use this opportunity to thank everybody, most especially Madam Speaker, who had boycotted going home to be with us this morning. Apparently, she was supposed to go home, and she had taken it upon herself to chair the sitting for us. God richly bless you. Yeah. It is my prayer that God makes you give back to a beautiful daughter that my born son will marry in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I, also, yeah. I also want to use the opportunity to thank uh, Akin Deputy Clerk, who by virtue is equally having an important activity to take care of. By, by virtue for the love of the of the of the movement, she's here to act in the capacity as deputy clerk. To our uh, acting clerk, I also thank him very much for the water that he has bought for us to quench our thirst. But the only situation I have is that I was given a smaller bottle, whilst minority leader was given a bigger bottle. That is to my only issue. I thank each and every one of us here presently for the commitment and staying here so far. Madam Speaker, in the absence of any further deliberation, I wish all our Muslim brothers <laughs> A happy Salah, and it is my prayer that somebody locate me with some of the meat. I solely move for the adjournment of this city. Amen. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker, for this opportunity. Second, the motion, the adjournment motion, moved by the majority leader. Okay. So when our speaker said, "We are not the future leaders." We are not the future leader. If we are not the future leader, then our country or the nation have no future. But if truly, truly we are the future leaders and then the current leaders are creating mess, then I think before their retirement, their retirement bonuses, everything up to what? To their money should be left behind and then what? We should use it to clear the mess that they've created now. Mm -hmm. So that maybe during that time they can just pass <laughs> away and then we use that money to, to cater for the mess that they've created. Also, touching on the application form, the application forms are still available. All the youth impact uh, members have to what? Apply. It's not necessary that you should come for, from a constituency that you should apply for. Let's take my case for instance. I'm coming from the Kato South, but I couldn't avail myself to be vetted for that position. But I was reassigned to a different constituent, which is uh, Akachino. So I'm cool with it. It's not necessarily that you should come from the same, the same constituency. So I'm urging all members to apply for this form. And also, I thank all honorable members for unveiling themselves for this city. And then I thank God for their life and then also pray that all the time spent here should not be in vain. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, before I put the question to ask, I'd like to thank the founder and then the co-founders of Youth Impact Parliament for giving me the opportunity to also chair the sitting for today. And then I'd like to thank all the honorable members for wasting the occasion and actually um, helping me chair the meeting. Okay, so um, honorable members, the motion has been moved and seconded. And I'll put the question to the house. All honorable members in favor say aye. Aye. Those in favor say nay. Nay. Honorable members, well, the ayes have been. The motion carries. Therefore, the house stands adjourned. Procession.
Yeah.